I just truly didn't think to invite them to the LA concert and didn't think that they would care to come. It's not about you. Did you guys enjoy the reveal? Yeah. She found out on the news, my mom. I she woke up. very happy. She forgot she had a family. Maybe think about telling them they were doing that before it goes to the media. Hi, YouTube. Welcome back to Cards Catch Up. This is the season finale. And lordy lordy, Scott is 40. Everyone showed up except Courtney. So Courtney does not want to push her boundaries. The boundaries. For Scott's 40th. I love that she's basically the star of this finale because we didn't get a lot of her at the beginning of the season. She takes Chloe and Chris, which are my favorite duo out of the whole family, on a tour bus to see Travis perform in San Diego. And we really get a feeling of the nitty gritty, which is like, it's not about the big fights and the drama. Like I love those moments of like seeing how Chris like needs to know what coffee Travis is drinking. Who's Duncan coffee, Travis? Oh. Needs to know what sandwich Travis is eating. What is Travis eating? But Travis doesn't eat at this hour. He doesn't eat at this hour. Oh. I love how we're getting to see Courtney kind of get annoyed with her family because she's realizing, oh, this is why I don't hang out with you guys as much anymore. Because when it comes to the Kardashians, it is a whole production and they are in charge of everything. Hence why Kris Jenner is texting her assistant, Matthew. Are we part of the Delmar Fairgrounds? Where are we? Yeah. Why would a Matthew valid. know? Matthew's back oh, in Calabasas. Can I tell you <laughs> Like he's not in the car. But let's talk about Chris and Chloe getting on the bus at the beginning and talking to camera about how Chris was a little upset that she had to find out about Courtney's pregnancy announcement to the world on TV. Did you guys enjoy the reveal? Yeah. She found out on the news, my mom. I she woke up. very happy. I opened my eyes. Rightfully so. And right in front of me, because we had left the TV on the night before, and woke up really early in the morning to see Courtney holding a sign. And I thought it was being punked. I'm like, did somebody put this up? And then I realized it was the ABC News. She forgot she had a family. That's what pregnancy brain does. It's wild how that happens. You know, I'm usually team court and I try to see her side, but it's like your family lives in LA. Like if you're planning on doing this at the LA show, like maybe think about telling them that you're doing that before it goes to the media. I just truly didn't think to invite them to the LA concert and didn't think that they would care to come. It's not about you. It just truly was our way to tell the world and it was about me and Travis. But cult at the same time, her family doesn't know one Blink-182 song. <laughs> How many Blink songs do you know? I don't Blink know any. Songs. You don't know what's my age again? How, what, where, I don't understand. If I was Travis, like I'd be a little butthurt. Or like, what's my age again? Or... Have you heard what's my age again? I don't know. I feel like the vibe was just a little off, but it was kind of funny that like Courtney loves being pregnant. She's mama earth, like God's plan. And she loves wearing her belly out, especially now that everyone knows. And P is a little triggered. Mom, please. This. Yeah? She doesn't like that your belly's out. Oh, you want me to zip it up? You're so bratty. It's, it's so, so cute. Stomach. Stop showing off. You're showing off your belly. It's like annoying. But anyway, they get to the house. They have this like room picking situation. They're all indecisive. Courtney has to check a million times what room. Guys. <laughs> There's rooms for everyone. Lo and behold, and not to our surprise, she blames Chris for everything. Why is this taking 30 minutes for us to pick a room? My mom is a massive control freak, and I think that we all get a bit of controlling nature from her. And when I'm around her, and I'm around Chloe, it makes me never want to be that way. <laughs> and then they're trying to have this like kitchen counter conversation. What about you? like makes you have this need to be so Bossy? controlling. No, Bossy. control, it's control. Oh, I don't know. Are you ever curious about yourself of why you're so I was so curious about where we were. Chris cracked me up trying to like make it light. Wait, sorry, but how cute is this? It's in for hard boiled eggs. And Courtney is trying to therapize. Well, it does exist. Actually, you can ha be back in your feminine energy if you ever desire. She's like, have you ever thought why you're like this? And do you know the generational trauma? And you think choosing bad partners is like 
a genetic thing? I think it's generational. I think it's like from MJ. Do you know that your, you know, <laughs> molecule was in Nana that passed on to me and I have your trauma? MJ's trauma. Okay. And Nana's trauma. What? Was like inside, is inside of me and you, because it was inside of mom. And Chris is literally like, do you have a dimple? Do you do therapy or no? Do you have a cute little dimple in your chin right there? I think I do. Chris Jenner just does not want to have these conversations with Courtney right now. And it was truly the funniest thing in the entire world. But you know what? Who wants to have these conversations? Like, you know I love Courtney, but like, let's have fun. Like, rock out with your c account, you know? Like, yes. which like kills me that Chris couldn't do the thing. And Chloe kept on like, but Courtney was trying to like tell Chris, like, you don't have to be like a boss all the time. You can let out your feminine energy, like let somebody else decide. Side. There's like being in your feminine, which uh -huh. is like self-care, like not overthinking, not overdoing. And it's kind of like makes you think that even though Courtney used to be very controlling with Scott and obviously wanted to control that relationship and she constantly refers to as toxic. A toxic relationship. And I'm like, wow, she really took the role of like little wifey with Travis Barker. It looks like she lets him make a lot of the big decisions. It looks like he chose the baby name, which drum roll, because we're not gonna have to wait for a year, like with the other sisters. It's Rocky 13, you guys. Are you happy? I, yeah, I'm so happy about Rocky. Travis, I feel like decided on his own. It feels like his own passion. Oh my God, he went on a podcast and talked about it. He did an interview with Complex and talked about it. Now we're seeing on the show that he's already had the name picked out before they even found out it was a boy. Courtney's like very, I don't know if lordy, but you know, even when people would be like, what do you want, a boy or a girl? She's like, God's plan, God's plan. Whatever is God's Plan. Prepare for God's plan. God's plan. It's like, fucking say what you prefer, okay? We know it's God's plan. We know the most important thing is that the baby is healthy, but like, just lean in. And here's the thing, like, I feel like now we can notice with this feminine energy that really, like, it's Travis's world and she's living in it. Even the gender reveal that she told her family about five seconds before. We are doing our gender reveal. If you guys, anyone wants to come, you're telling me the day before. Mm -hmm. Was like a drumming tour thing. It's like, did he not have enough time on like real tour? The gender reveal had to be tour too. Another part of this episode, even though Courtney, you know, took up a lot was again, Kim work, 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 work. I feel like Kim took the variety comment, like get your ass up and work. Get your ass up and work and she just took it upon herself to work more because it's like she's always worked so much and now the narrative is like no but this is the most she's ever worked i have to get ready to go back to new york I'm filming American Horror Story, no days off. Like getting up at 4 a.m. to film American Horror Story is a lot. My call time was 4 a.m. Yeah, it's like long days. I have like eight days of full back-to-back -back work. I have so much respect for actors. These long hours are really, really crazy. And filming all day and remembering these lines. And this is after, you know, trotting the globe. And I love how she's like, this isn't just a little cameo. Like this is an actual role. I need to learn my lines, I have to do this. Like, she didn't even know how big of a commitment this was gonna be. This is not like some little cameo. This is like a serious role I'm in. That's the one thing that I'm just like insecure about. It's eye-opening because it's kind of like, whoa, the cameras are rolling on this behind the scenes of this television show that I think if I was Emma Robertson, an actress or actor, I'd be kind of weirded out. Like, why the hell are you bringing your camera crew behind the scenes when we're already filming the show? Emma is so nice, so pretty. So sweet, and she's so creative. What if the cast hates me? What if they are like, oh God, why is she here? You know, that kind of energy. I did write all my sisters and my mom and everyone today, and I said, you guys, I just want you to be really appreciative. This shit's like really long hours. It's you should long. be really lucky that you have to roll out of bed and film in your <laughs> house. With makeup, without makeup, whatever you want to do. It's a different beast, it's yeah. definitely. Because it's just like, when you're a Kardashian, like the cameras come everywhere. So I wonder how that feels to be on set. Well, it feels to me like not to discredit Kim because she obviously did a good job. The directors were happy. I tried not to have expectations. She did not disappoint. 
But we have to also understand that this is a business and they also want somebody like Kim so that more people will watch the show. So if the camera crews are gonna come, they're gonna come, Emma Roberts. You're gonna have to deal with it. But I love how we got to see like Kim doing something else because she does try to show us the lawyering and the prison breaking and all that. And it's like, great, babe, keep on doing good for the world, but like less entertaining for us. This was actually entertaining and also lets us see like, damn, acting isn't so glamorous. It looks hard. I'm losing my voice because I'm talking so much and I have so many lyrics that I, I mean song lines with the wrong <laughs> 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 So many people want to be actors and like think that's the life. And you could tell that Kim, who's so used to the hustle and bustle, this was a lot for her. This was more than usual. This is more than a photo shoot that takes a couple hours. So what did you guys think of the season finale of the Kardashians? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to check out this season's past recaps in case you missed them. And don't forget to subscribe.